Three things that SEOs can learn from Google Ads with Christophe Margette. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all in one SEO platform that helps skill your business through data and analytics. Hey, it's David. Should SEO and Google Ads teams sit in separate camps? Never the twain shall meet. Or can both specialties help each other out? And if so, what can SEOs learn from Google Ads? That's what we're going to be discussing today with a man who's certified in both Google Ads and Google Analytics. Is one of the top Google Ads and Analytics trainers in Poland. And is head of a 300 plus client agency with 16 years of SEO and Google Ads experience. A warm welcome to the In Search SEO podcast, Christophe Marget. Hello, hi. It's super nice to be here and talk to you. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us, Christophe. Well, you can find Christophe over at devagroup.pl. So, Christophe, should SEO and Google Ads teams be sitting together? Yes, for sure. It will grant you an extra amount of insights in both SEO and Google Ads and SEO team, a SEO team will have better results listening to Google Ads guys or girls, the team, and vice versa. The knowledge you can take from keywords, from how Google works or what Google shows us in certain tools like Google Search Console or Google Ads Panel, it will impact both campaigns. So it's very, very important to put them in one room and let them speak and let them work together. So can people working in Google Ads learn more of SEOs or can SEOs learn more of people working in Google Ads? I think both because we can learn a lot of stuff that Google is not telling us directly in SEO, but we can read it in Google Ads panel and vice versa because people from Google Ads, they don't really know which uh, landing page is great for their keywords and they try they make some experiments, but we can really easily tell in SEO which landing page is better because we see that Google ranks this uh, well, landing page higher than others, for example. So today you're sharing three things that SEOs can learn from Google Ads. So starting off with number one, expected click-through rate. Yeah, all three things are uh, elements of quality score. You have to note that Google Ads has this very, very good diagnostic tool. It's called Quality Score. It's a part of ranking in ads, but not a direct part. Google says rather it's a scale from zero to 10 for us to learn if we did a good job or a bad job doing Google Ads. And part of the Quality Score is expected click-through rate. So this parameter shows you if you have ads for keywords that are great with a great CTR or no, but they don't look at the position of ad. Uh, you don't need to be the first to have great expected CTR because Google has a database, uh, of course, big data, and they look at it for uh, exact keywords and they check your CTR is matching your position for this keyword. And they are evaluating this according not to like some ranking, but other ads at the exact real time moment. So for example, now my ad will be much better, performing much better than other ads, but in two weeks time, I will be lower because I didn't update my ad and my competitors did this. So there is a super, great knowledge there because you can learn which ads, because in Google ads, we don't write one ad. We put a lot of headlines, we put a lot of texts and Google is A, B testing or A, B, C, D testing mm -hmm. uh, all the time. Then you will learn which ads have the greatest CTR. And then you can use this knowledge in SEO. How? Using it in titles because they are on a search engine results page and you can use them in description and of course google will overwrite your description and title sometimes but when you are doing this for a big site for a large e-commerce or you have a lot of landing pages or urls you can expect that you will improve your ctr when you write description not only like okay we'll put some keywords there we know it doesn't work in description but you can achieve 
greater CTRs. This is so important to learn from people in Google Ads. And they will tell you that they use call to action. They will use USP, unique selling proposition. They will use numbers in their ads to get user attention. So we have to use them in meta description and in title also. They will tell you that people are attracted to ads that are showing emotions or that are simply different or unique. So if you learn how they are doing the better ads, you can do a lot of better titles and descriptions. Great advice there. So actually target the appropriate emotion for the stage of the buyer journey that you happen to be targeting and try to incorporate that within your title and meta description to improve your click-through rates. And that, that's a great thing that you can learn, certainly from paid ads. But um, you, you, we're obviously talking about expected click-through rate. Do you think that expected click-through rate is also part of Google's or, or organic algorithm? I and mean, will they actually look at other results and give you potentially a rankings boost if they believe that your click-through rate is going to be higher than competitors? I never found an exact test that will prove this or someone from Google saying, yes, this is true. But it makes this sense. Is very, it makes sense. It's a powerful tool. They have it in Google Ads. And wasting this, not using this in organic search would be like, Great waste. Like this is something that keeps uh, Google ads uh, at bay because I can pay a lot of money to get an ad for a wrong keyword, like spam our users. I won't do it because they will uh, ask me for to pay uh, more and more and more because my quality score will be lower. So they are keeping it at bay. It's order. So if they are not using this tool to get an order in organic results, I don't know why you shouldn't. So I think there is a correlation. We found that improving titles, improving descriptions give you better results, but this is not an like, isolated test. This was a part of big uh, projects, SEO audits and stuff like this. So it works. It's like good strategy. But if it's working like this exact, I don't know. And the number two thing that SEOs can learn from Google Ads is ad relevance. Yeah, it's super important to understand that Google has two parameters in quality score. First is CDR, then ad relevance. And you have to know that behind every keyword, there's an intent. So when I'm putting laptop in Google, I'm looking for myself for a gaming laptop because I like to play games. And other users are looking for different stuff. So when you go to Keyword Planner and you put those keywords, you can find another keyword and you, you have a cloud of keywords. And SEO tend to use them like, okay, let's use all the keywords because we want to rank higher. But you have to think about a landing page and what you are giving the user. So for example, if you are putting a keyword laptop, you have to have a landing page with gaming laptops, office laptops, cheap laptops, expensive laptops to match the all intents of the all users. And if you don't have this, sometimes you will find very hard to get the great visibility for the landing page for certain keywords. And we see this, we see that it's super hard to get high position for a keyword that is not relevant to our landing page to our description title and stuff. And when you learn this in Google ad, you will see that, okay, this is not working. Google is asking us to pay more money. You can upgrade the content. So you can also do the very important thing, answer all the questions that user has. Because when I'm putting a laptop, I will think like, which gaming laptop is the best, which company produces the most reliable laptops. And if you put those answers on the landing pages on your website, you will get the better answer for the intent and also keyword, so you can get more relevant results. And it is very important and we know that it works. Improving content based on, of course, data-driven SEO is important, but user-driven experience uh, is also super important. Well, that was number two ad relevance, but I get the feeling that you answered quite a bit of number three, because number three is landing page experience. Yeah, it all connects, right? But when talking about landing page experience, you can do more things. For example, we saw that improving Core Web Vitals just to get more points is not so relevant, but improving real 
page speed time load, like when we improved some, for example, next gen uh, images, or we improved coding overall on the web uh, website, it worked great stuff. Not only for SEO, for Google Ads and for the conversions, because people tend to stay more. So this is super important to focus on technical side. Okay, we know this, but also when you have information about which page is great, has great results in Google, in organic, you can tell this to your Google Ads team, and they also can run a dynamic search ads. This is an automatic campaign that will match keywords from Google database with landing pages you provided. You can provide whole website, for example, or all list or your, of your content or products, and they will match them and you have the best score there. So you know exactly which keyword matches which landing page, and you can use this knowledge to learn how Google works, how they match this, and the Google tells you that they will use index from Google, from organic Google, to run this campaign. So if you want to have better results in DSA, dynamic search ads, and also in shopping ads, you have to improve your index uh, for the first campaign and improve your content and index for the second campaign. So yeah, it's super important to know that they will not use certain keywords uh, for your ads because they are not existent. So you have to work together to have better descriptions of your products and stuff like this. Mm, this is super good. And then you have one report in Google Ads to sum this up. You can see exact variation of keywords because in when you use Google Ads, you put a keyword and it will use a phrase match or exact match or broad match. And you can learn new keywords from there. Learn keywords that are, for example, explaining this intent behind other keywords for you or giving you idea to put more content on your site. So when you see it in the same room or you read the reports, you can learn how to get new keywords in the same landing pages and it will improve overall relevancy and then user experience for those landing pages. So obviously paid search, Google Ads professionals can't really just use exact match nowadays. It used to be that was probably the, the, the best way to go because you could be very definitive about what keyword phrases you're targeting. But now Google want to use more AI to help to bring in other related keyword phrases. But um, it still feels to me that um, Google Ads professionals are probably more specific and have a smaller bucket of keyword phrases that they want to target per page compared with organic search professionals. Um, so would you say that there's a, a maximum number of ideal keyword phrases that you want to target per page before it gets too broad and you're trying to uh, attract too many people and target too many keyword phrases on a page? I think no, there is not such a limit, but uh, of course, when we have uh, more than 10 or 15 uh, keywords in one ad group, we are thinking if we are still relevant because the, the ad group is made because of ad relevancy. Like they are co containers for the keywords to write a good uh, ad for all the keywords in an ad group, okay? So when you have this very, very long pillar page in SEO, it works a little different because you can uh, link to anchor text and it's a big article for a user, he or she can read it all and it's okay. In Google Ads, we, uh, we divide these campaigns. We want uh, more landing pages because we have to give user relevant information right away, right? So. I think we can both learn from both sides and make something that, okay, it can be pillar page, but it should have this uh, little description at the beginning and bullet points and links, internal links, right? So we, we are using this and we can also use this in Google Ads because we can link to Ancortex or we can uh, make deep links in uh, your website. So yeah, but there is no limit. I think uh, we have a bigger issue going on because we wanted to keep this control, right? You said about this control in Google Ads, we use exact, but the exact is not the same exact as like five, 10 years ago. We have a lot more keywords running our ads than we want to. And you have to keep very close eye to this because you will waste money and you will waste the potential because 
if you don't know all the keywords, you are not using them all in SEO. And for Google, they are the same, like they mean the same for Google and for their users. So you have to improve, use them on your site also, not only the core keyword, but also the different keyword. Not the mistakes like wrong letter, but the keywords that are Google putting in the same bucket as uh, other in exact match. And the last issue is performance max campaigns. This is a big issue for SEOs, and you have to learn about this campaign and know how it works. Uh, we see a lot of clients that are saying that they have a greater visibility in SEO, big results in numbers, but the conversion are going low or lower than last year. It is because performance max campaigns use our brand keywords so user is coming back to your site, not through Google Organic, but Google CPC in Google Analytics 4, for example. So you have to know that your friend from Google Ads can steal your conversions. And you have to look at the bigger picture because if your client is only looking at last click, you have some problems ahead. You have to learn about this and say, okay, we are getting these conversions also, but we are the start of the journey and they are returning users. Okay, they will convert from your ads because you are running ads on your own brand, on your own keywords. And you probably even don't know this because you are using Performance Max campaign. Uh, lots to think about there and um, not a very nice friend to go about stealing your last clicks, but <laughs> you have to understand how the, it's the landscape purpose, changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? Okay, so I go to a tool. In Poland, we have two of them. It's called SEMstorm or Senuto. And of course, for the world, SEMrush is your way to go. And you can go to this tool and search for your competition keywords, but search with uh, SERP features like the snippets. And then you can download all the list of questions they are ranking on or questions they are answering. Okay, we can also use uh, SEO Surfer or Conti tool for this. But if you use any of those tools, the idea is to search for the questions and to answer those questions on your landing pages. For example, someone is asking which product is better. You can do a ranking and you can do a comparison because you are putting new content, you're answering the question, so you're matching the intent, and then you are getting new keywords. And those keywords are very, very important. And don't be misled by the number of searches, because Google will tell you that the keyword has only 20, 40 volume searches a month. This is not true because people are making those questions in very, very many ways. So Google is not combining this to one statistics, but you have a lot of variation. So you have like 10, 40, but in fact, you'll have 100 or 200 of questions similar to this, ask it to Google every month. So this is a very, very good strategy to find those questions, answer them, and you will get great results. And of course, nowadays, with those 200 different ways that people ask the same question, you don't have to write those questions in the same way in your landing page. Yeah. Google's clever enough to be able to know what question that they're trying to serve the answer to. Absolutely. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Christoph Marjek over at devagroup.pl. Christoph, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com. <laughs>